Hello, and welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before. I'm Sarah, and this video is the first in a new series where I endeavor to knit through the socks in Stephen West's 2023 Year of Socks. I'm really excited about this idea. I have seen the first two patterns in the collection now, and I really like them, and I think that this is just what I need to get my sock knitting to be more interesting. I plan to do these somewhat frequently as each sock pattern comes out and keep up with it through the year, hopefully. I was inspired to start making this sort of video after watching Eliza O'Kay's channel, where she's knitting through the 52 Weeks of Socks book by Lina, and this seemed like a much more achievable, but still sort of a similar idea and still really fun um, way of doing a similar thing to that. So all of the inspiration goes towards her. I really enjoy watching her videos and it's because I liked watching her videos so much I thought I would try and do it for myself. Um, so this is the first clip of the first one and the first pair of socks that I'm going to make is the first pair of socks that was released, which is the Painting Brick Socks. Um, I have made two shawls by Stephen West before. Um, the M cals from 2020 and 2021, and this sh the um, painting bricks shawl uses some of the motifs that were in Slipstravaganza, which I'm familiar with. I don't have a lot of minis to use, so I'm just going to use two colors, and um, the colors I'm using are from the shawlography shawl that I made. I'm going to use these two colors. I'm thinking this for the main color and this for the background because um, I think that the background colors that are marled look really cool. I like the idea of doing minis, I just don't have that many minis. Um, and I'm planning on primarily making this on the train. So it will be convenient to not have a bunch of minis floating around in my um, project bag. So I'm going to get going on this. I'm very excited to be starting this video series. I hope that you enjoy it. Maybe you're knitting along. And um, yeah, I'll get back to you maybe in a day or two when I've made some progress on the socks. Thank you for watching so far. Hello, it's one day later, although you probably can't tell because I'm wearing the same thing and I'm sitting in the same spot. It's about 8 p.m. the next day. The clip, the last clip was from about 11 p.m. at night. So almost a full day later. Last night I cast on the sock and I knit the ribbing and the first brick. Um, and then I went to bed. And today I knit on the leg while I was on the train on the way home from university. On the way to uni, I normally try and do schoolwork. Um, but then on the way back, I'm always a little fried, so I listen to an audiobook and I do some knitting or I read something for fun, and it's about an hour on the train, so there's a good amount of time. So this is what I've gotten done in that time. Um, I've done four and a half bricks. The pattern is really intuitive, especially if you've made the slip extravaganza shawl or really any sort of slip stitch motif um, where, you, where you might be used to this sort of carrying a pillar of slip stitches up. It's really not difficult. I've memorized the repeat at this point and um, I'm really enjoying it. I didn't tell you what yarns I was using yesterday. Uh, this is Fig from Earth, Earth Fiber. I think that they say that the, the yarns in this range are named after the thing with which they are dyed. So apparently a fig produced this color. This is just such a gorgeous color. It goes with almost every single yarn that I own. Um, I love like the grungy sort of chartreuse. It's like chartreuse with the color wheel all the way close to the bottom. I love it. Um, and the color that I'm using for the brick background is called Frog's Hideout from Swoon Fibers. Um, 
And this is also a really gorgeous colorway. Um, I used, picked these two tees together because I had a pretty limited selection of sock yarn here um, to choose from. Uh, my whole yarn collection isn't here, most of it is in the States. Um, but I brought over, honestly, like a little bit of an absurd amount of yarn uh, to Scotland uh, for the time that I'm here. And not a lot of it was sock yarn. I have bought some sock yarn, but I didn't really want to use any of, the, any of it for this pattern because it's like quite a graphic, punchy pattern. And I wanted to use a superwash yarn for this, um, something really smooth because a lot of my other projects right now are with more natural fibers, so I thought it would be nice to have a whip that was using like a really smooth, hardy yarn. Um, and also it means that if something goes wrong size-wise, it's much easier for me to give it to someone else because I don't have to give this whole caveat of how to wash these socks. Um, although I think that since it's top down, I will probably be able to nail the size for them to be for me. Um, and that is my intention. I, I start a bit of a habit of um, starting projects and not finishing them. I have another one sock that is complete. Um, and I think that like in a perfect world, I would knit these socks, not two at a time, but like concurrently. So knit the leg of one and then the leg of the other, and then the heel and gusset of one and the heel and gusset of the other, just so that I don't get stuck in the second sock scenario. But um, my main knitting time on these, I think is gonna be on the train and it's just nice to have a more portable project. So I am gonna stick with one if I run into second stock scenario, you know, that just is fine. Um, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get at least one clip where the lighting is good so you can see the color as well. Um, and also these two colors are in the wing section together of my shawl shawlography so when the lighting is a little bit better maybe if i film the clip during the daytime i can show you that section and um how nice they look together so i think i'm about in stephen west's sock he does he has about 10 blocks on the leg i don't really want my sock to be as long as his so i think i'm gonna maybe do six. I'll, whatever I do, I'll measure up against a sock that I really like and just knit the same leg as that. Um, I didn't do a folded rib uh, because I didn't want to and um, for a cast on I did the slip knot cast on which is which I am a devotee of. I did it once and nothing is like it. It's so stretchy it's kind of fiddly and hard to do, especially with more rustic wool. But with this sort of yarn, it's a breeze. And it's like, I just, there isn't, I love the cast on so much. Um, I think it's like Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast on. It's just a series of slip knots. Um, and one of the great things about it is that you don't work with a tail. So you can really just decide where you want your tail to be. And I find that to be very, nice because I always have a too short or way too long tail so yeah there's my sock so far about one day later I'd say maybe like two and a half hours of knitting so far it feels like it's going fast um I don't know if that if two and a half hours for this much would be fast for another person but I'm not finding that this like pattern is really slowing me down at all and I feel great about my color choice so yeah really enjoying this so far um I moved over to be right next to the heater because I've been trying to warm up and I thought that I would tell you a little bit about my day today while I knit a couple of rows on my sock um so I today was my first day of classes of the second term 
Uh, I'm doing a one-year master's degree in English literature, and I go to university in a different city from where I live. So, as I was saying earlier, it's about an hour on the train each way. Um, so it's quite a trek, but definitely doable. Um, so today was the first day of classes of the new term, and um, I didn't really know what to expect. One of my classes had readings assigned quite a bit, and the other one uh, didn't have any readings assigned. Um, so I had to get up quite early for me um, to get in. I got the 815 train, and then it's about a two mile walk from the train station to the uni. I could have taken the subway, but it's quite a nice walk, and I like to like get a bit of movement in before I go and sit in a classroom. So that was how I started my morning. Um, I had a two hour class and then a two hour break, and I had checked the forecast quite, Oh, hi. Yeah, I had checked the forecast right before I left the house because I have a rain jacket, but come on, Fergie, move. Come on. Yeah, I have a rain jacket, but it is quite light and it was cold, so I wanted to wear my coat, um, but the coat's not waterproof. So I checked the forecast and the forecast promised no rain, clear skies, no, not a single drop of rain. Um, so stupidly, I went in with a raincoat and on my way to a coffee shop after my first class, it torrentially rained and I got absolutely soaked through and I remained soaked through for about, for the next like six hours. Um, the two hours between my classes, and then my two hour class, the second one, um, and my, by that time apparently there was like some mechanical issue with the subway, so the subways were all cancelled, and so I walked back to the train station, and I took the train home, and I got back here about 6, 6.15. Um, so a long 11 hour day, most of which I spent really wet um, and really cold. So I'm sitting right next to the heater trying to warm up. I've got a cup of tea, peppermint tea. And I finished this wrapper of biscuits. Um, and my very nice boyfriend made me a hot water bottle for when I was when I arrived home. So that was nice, um, nice of him. It's been a pretty long, pretty tiring day. Uh, I think that my Mondays are all going to be pretty tiring because it's just quite a long time to be out and about. Um, but I do think that the classes will be interesting. The second one um, is it taught by a new lecturer and she only got access to her email last night and the Moodle, which is like the website where all of our readings and the information about our courses. Um, so she only got access to that last night and she seemed quite underprepared, but I can't blame her because she didn't know what was going on until last night. But in general, I think that both lectures are really good. I think that the classes this term are good and after having done a term, I know a bit more of what to expect. And I was a bit grumpy in that class because I was soaking wet and had been for hours. Um, I, I think that it will be really good. Uh, I think it was just a difficult first day for me and that professor. Um, but it's fun to sort of meet the new people that are gonna be my classmates and yeah, get a grip of what the term is going to be like. Um, I'm still finishing some of my work from last term. I got extensions due to health reasons. So hopefully all that work will be done by the end of the week. I'm prepared to stay up if it's not and work 
it needs it can't go on past this week um but yeah so that's what my day's been like i am pretty tired out pretty ready to just relax a little bit hopefully i'll get a little bit of work done on one of my essays tonight um and get maybe get a bit more of the sock done i've just finished another brick so it really doesn't take long to knit a brick at all um yeah so that's like that's what's going on with me um I don't normally make this sort of video, so I hope that you're enjoying it and that it's worth watching. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Hello, it's the next day and I spent a good amount of time working on my sock last night. I am in the gusset now. I did the heel flap and heel turn last night. And I thought I would steal a moment before my next online class, which is in five minutes, to show you how the colors look in the daylight, because after class, it will be dark. Um, it's about 5 to 3 p.m. here in Edinburgh, so here's a pretty good color. Um, Look at the color, so it's a garter flap heel. I made a mistake. You're supposed to start the garter heel right after the brick, but I um, didn't read the pattern that carefully. So uh, yeah, I started it after the green section. Um, I think that it's not gonna make any difference really, except that I picked up the stitches in the contrast color. Um, sometimes I got a little funky with my slip stitches because in this pattern it has you in the gusset slip the stitches at the end of the round and not at the beginning but almost every other sock pattern I've knit has had you slip the stitches at the beginning of the round so I think that I have those holes because I got mixed up a little bit but I have to cut this um, green anyway because my new beginning of the round is here um, so I'll leave a long enough tail that I can close up those holes and the other side is actually pretty good so don't think that that will be a problem I'm really enjoying knitting this it's coming together the garter heel flap was fun and I'm curious to see how well it will hold up compared to a slip stitch heel flap um, so yeah, again, I'm just keeping the same contrast color. And this is a look at my shawl, my shawlography from two years ago. And this was the section with the two colors together that I'm using in the socks that I really liked. And that was kind of the inspiration for using them together in these socks. I wonder if I can hold them up at the same time. So that's where I am today at, at about um, three minutes to three in the afternoon. I'm wearing my ranunculus cotton and my timepiece cardigan, which is a pattern by Albiona McLaughlin, which I really like. I just bought some buttons to go on it, so it hasn't got buttons yet, but I wear this a lot. I really like how the color like has a bit of body. You, know, you see what I mean? like. I think that's neat. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my little update. I'm in the gusset territory now, and I will check in with you later. Hello, it's Friday the 13th, and I have finished my first sock. I finished it yesterday, last night, um, I got to the end of the foot and then I just couldn't stop, so I knit the toe. It's a normal wedge toe, and um, I think it looks amazing. Here, you can see in the sun. I've got a seam, quite a visible side seam, where I was doing the magic loop right down there, and on the other side, sort of too, but I think that that'll probably just stretch out um, as it's being worn. 
One thing I've noticed in trying it on is that the garter heel flap is really stretchy. Um, like it's, it covers much more of the foot than a normal heel flap would because normally the slip stitch like makes it less stretchy. Um, so I'm interested to see how that will wear. When I was weaving the ends in, I just sort of closed up the hole at the side of the gusset. It might be a little bit small. You can see that the heel is like a little bit below my heel. I don't know, it might stretch out. I mean, it feels like it fits fine. So I probably won't redo it. But if I get to the end of the next one and I really want to add another, maybe just one more block would make it go to the right. Like one more repeat of this one more brick would make it go to the right place. So it's possible I come back and redo the toe, but unlikely. I really like the way it fits. At first I thought it was a little bit too tight, but I actually think that it's nice. And um, yeah, I've already cast on the next one. I've just done the cast on and I'm excited to get going with this and have the two socks. Today, otherwise, I'm working on my essay. I don't have any school to go to, but I'll do some readings for it. And I might go on a walk since it's a really nice day. So that's my plan for today. I'm not gonna say get a lot of knitting done. I hope I get a lot of schoolwork done and an appropriate amount of knitting. Because if I get some of the essays done, it means that I can do more guilt-free knitting next week. So that's my goal. I really enjoyed knitting the first sock. I'm excited about this project. And I recorded my first video of the new year for like my normal podcast. Like one of my normal podcasts. And um, yeah, I'm excited to upload that too. So I'll check in with you when I've made some more progress on the second sock. Hello, it is the next night and I haven't got a lot of sock knitting done during the day. I've been really focusing on work for uni and getting my papers done. Um, I've struck a deal with myself though, which is for every 500 words that I edit this evening, I will knit one brick on my brick, <laughs> painted brick sock. So I've done one, um, I've got about a thousand words left to edit. I think it gets harder and harder as I go, but that's okay. Um, so hopefully by the end of the night, not too late maybe, um, I will be done with this paper and I will be a few more bricks done on my sock. My original, original, my first sock has eight leg bricks, so I won't be getting a leg done tonight because I need to focus on some other stuff, but I'm doing a little bit of it to give my mind a break every once in a while. And still really enjoying this pattern, still loving the yarns. I think that the colors are really, really nice. I actually kind of like the just plain stripey section in the other one the best out of all of the sections in the sock. It's really cool. I'm also wearing my shawl log Slip strap again is a shawl because it's freezing down here um, in this apartment. So keeping warm, I've got some tea and I'm gonna get back to work now. I have finished my painting brick socks. Here they are. Um, the sun is setting, so you, this is actually I think a very accurate color um, representation. Uh, I just think the yarn is so nice and they look so good together. This, uh, I think I mentioned before, but this is Fig by Earth Fibers, a sock yarn. Um, and then this dark sort of variegated color is called Frog's Hideout and it's by Swoon Fibers. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy with them. I gave them a quick block just 
some water, left them to soak, and then I just laid them flat on the radiator. I don't have sock blockers here, but I don't think that they need sock blockers. Um, they fit me, they're on the smaller side, but they'll be totally fine. I do think I might make the next size up for my next pair of socks. Um, because it looks like the stitch counts are a little bit slower. Um, if that makes sense, like the next pair, he only wants you to cast on 60. And by the next pair, I mean the cable trellis socks, I think that they're called. You can maybe hear my boyfriend in a meeting in the other room right now. So sorry if you can hear that. Last time we were talking, I had, I was right working on some schoolwork and I was knitting one brick as a reward for each um, segment of my essay that I had written. That essay is complete. Hallelujah. I still have one more to go, um, but the socks are done. I got to about here on the toe the last night before going to bed, um, and I finished them this morning. It just took five minutes because it was just like a few stitches left. Wove in all the ends. Um, they're really nice. I love them. I'm really happy to have them. I do think that blocking loosened them up a little bit. It's not that they were too small before, but they were sort of tight. This is where I carried my thread, and that's what it looks like. Um, I just, I didn't use, I didn't cut between sections because I was just using the same color as my contrast color for the whole sock. Um, but I did need to cut the green after the heel flat because, sorry if you can hear my partner. Um, yeah, I just needed to cut the green after the heel flat because the end of the row is like here and then the end of the, end of the row moved from being here to here. I made a bit of a mis- the only mistake I made is that the heel flap was supposed to start immediately after the brick section and not after a green sort of, uh, the like, <laughs> what would you call this section? What are they, what's the word for what they put between bricks? Is it concrete? Surely not. Like. Oh, why don't I know this? Anyway, the I had done this light green section and then did the heel flap, but in the pattern you're supposed to do a brick and then do the heel flap, but it didn't make a difference at all. But I think in some other versions you'll see that the stitches that are picked up on the side are in the main color, whereas mine is just in the contrast color. It doesn't make any difference at all, really, I don't think. Um, I did nine bricks for the foot. I just really love this yarn. I think it's stunning. So this is the end of my first Stephen West Year of Socks video. Um, I'm really excited to be making 12 more pairs of these, hopefully. And I've thoroughly enjoyed the first one. Uh, it took me about nine days to knit the pair of them. Um, I would say that this has sort of been a bit of a weird time for knitting with me because I've been working so much on my work for uni uh, that I haven't really had any big chunks of time to dedicate, but I have had quite a lot of little chunks of time to dedicate. So in a way, it's good for sock knitting, but also, I, I don't know, I think nine days is pretty fast for a pair of socks, especially for me. I don't consider myself to be that fast of a knitter. Um, it did feel like these flew by, especially the second one, but um, I guess I, I don't know. I haven't been knitting on anything else during this time, so I wouldn't say it was either fast or slow in practice, because it felt fast, but I think in reality I was spending less time knitting. Anyway, I'm just rambling now, not making much sense. Um, I just wanted to record this, show you my socks. I'm so excited to have them um, and wear them. And um, if you're wondering what I'm wearing, 
This is the Funky Turtle Pullover from 52 Weeks of Easy Knits um, by Teddy, designed by Teddy, Teddy's Knit Garden is her username on Instagram. Um, it's a good jumper. Do recommend if you're interested. Um, I wonder if there's anything else I should tell you about these socks. I don't know. Oh, I used about 45 grams of the light green and about 25 grams of the contrast color to make a size 2, which I think is like a 60 or a 64 cast on um, number. And normally I do 64 for context. I did a bit of a shorter leg because I like socks that aren't super long in the leg. And I did not do the super tall doubled hem at the top because I just wanted a normal hem. Oh, I did a slip knot cast on, which I think I talked about. It's just the best cast on. And um, I did a normal wedge toe, followed the pattern. Also, that's the type of toe I like to do. Um, Kitchener stitch at the end of the toe. I think that's all I have to say. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this sort of bits and pieces knitting vlog, I guess. Um, I hope, yeah, I hope that this is received well and people Hope you've enjoyed watching if you've come this far and I'll see you soon maybe with a regular episode or maybe with another one of these videos. I think I'm gonna finish a couple of my sock projects that are ongoing before I cast on the next pair but I don't want to wait too long because there's a mo I'm kind of behind like I'm one behind so there's cable trellis but then another one is coming out on February 1st and today is January 17th so I don't want to wait too long, but I also want to finish some of the socks I've got on before I make the next thing. Um, so I've also been wanting to make an everything I made in 2022 video, but a lot of the stuff I made is in the States, so I would just be putting in clips and stuff. Maybe I'll get around to that eventually, but since I don't actually have all of the things here, I, it hasn't been a priority. Um, so I'm going to get back to doing my working on my essays, and thank you so much for watching, if you've watched this. I will see you next time. Goodbye.